Hello, Leo listeners. Clara here from Leo Listening, where I help film loving non native English speakers understand and discuss movies together so they can get ready for real life conversations with fast talking native speakers. Whew, that's a mouthful. I'm glad that's over. And I'm also very happy today to introduce you to my friend and colleague, Chris. Pontirori. I just practiced that before we <laughs> before we connected so that I would I would get that I would get that right. And um, we're going to talk a bit about uh travel and discussing travel as a way to improve your English. But before we get into that, Chris, do you want to introduce yourself a bit more? Tell us about yourself and your teaching. Sure. Um uh, well, first of all, thank you, Cara, for having me here. Um, it's another honor and a pleasure both. So, um, you know, I've been following you for a while, so now to be here is great. Um, well, my name is Chris Pontaroli, and I help English learners become English speakers. And of course, that means that I try to help people gain confidence so that um, they speak out and they can communicate. Um, knowing that the most important thing that can happen in communication is connection and they shouldn't worry so much about reaching perfection which in the end we never get there but what matters is the connection that happens between people so i help my students reach that level and feel that they are speakers of english and not learners or studying english oh wow so that's the idea that's a really beautiful message. I love that. Um, and how how did you get into teaching English and speaking English yourself? Tell us a bit about that journey. Okay. Well, I mean, um, well, it started when I was very little. I went to a bilingual school here in Argentina, and I've always loved. I think that I loved communication. I actually love communication, and that's why I focus on that. And I've always thought that English was a tool to actually get better at communication. And um, very early on, I started uh, a course with an American teacher who maybe saw something in me, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, she trained me in NLP and teaching techniques and so on. So I started teaching at her institute. And then I went to teacher's training college, but I dropped out because I was not really happy with the strict style of teacher's training college. And I became an interpreter instead. Oh. So I'm a simultaneous interpreter, but in the end, I've always loved teaching. So while I was studying to become an interpreter, I kept teaching. And in the end, that's where my heart was. So, you know. Wow. That's what I've always been doing. Yeah. yeah. So you came back to it in the end. Absolutely. Okay. Lovely. Yeah. All right. Great. That's that's really cool. So you're based in Argentina. Um, that's right. In Buenos Aires or somewhere else in Patagonia. Yes. Yeah. No, not Patagonia. <laughs> Only for vacations. I mean, it, it would be lovely if I were there because, I mean, it's a beautiful place. But no, I'm in. I'm an urban person. I love mm. cities, and um, I enjoy discovering cities. The point is that you know, like being in Buenos Aires, that it's a huge city and it's an attraction for tourists. It's not the same when you actually live in the city because you are full of obligations and work and things mm. you have to do. So you cannot enjoy the city the same way as when you are elsewhere and you travel as a tourist. So. Um, Yes, I'm here and I enjoy living here, but unfortunately I have to go somewhere else to enjoy cities because in my city I'm full of obligations. Okay, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, you're not, it's, it's, it's definitely not the same when you're actually living your life in, in a place, no matter how beautiful or, you know, touristy it is, um, it kind of takes the the charm away a little bit. Um, and you've got a trip coming up, right, um, where yeah. you will actually get to enjoy some cities, right? Absolutely. Yes. And um, I'm crossing the Atlantic and I'm going over to Europe. Um, you know, I used to live there. I used to live. I, I lived in Barcelona when I was quite young and I lived in France, in Brest, uh, for a while as well. 
Mm. And but I haven't been there in like 20 years. So this time I'm yeah. So this time I'm going there. I'm taking my 16 year old daughter that it's going to be the first time that she goes to Europe as well. So I'm really psyched about uh, that opportunity. It's um, quite big because um, we use uh, we used to go to New York and mm. uh, we've been going to New York. I told you, I like city. So we've been going <laughs> to New York since only was seven, like almost every year, but we never made it across the Atlantic. And this is our first chance after so long. So yeah, I'm really psyched about it. All right. Amazing. Okay. Um. Well, and as I understand, you, you, you're interested in connecting these two passions, this love of travel and teaching English and for you travel is a great topic to get people speaking more confidently do you want to talk a bit more about why you think that is yeah sure um you know in the philosophy of um connecting with uh the language and other speakers i think like the perfect example of that is actually what happens when you travel where you have to go out of your comfort zone and mm. you're in a you know like you're in a out of your comfort zone but at the same time the environment is pleasant and nice and you're trying to enjoy yourself so it's like the best combination of like a challenge and at the same time a gratifying experience and i think that um Throughout the years, I have seen how my students uh, have worked with me. And then as a result, when they were out there, maybe traveling or maybe working for international companies, they have felt that confidence that I'm always speaking about. And that made me think that um, it would be a great idea if I could share my own trip with my students, making them... Um, have the possibility to accompany me virtually, of course, um, through the itinerary that I'm going to make and mm. perhaps talk to the people who have actually been in the places where I'm going to be. And for those that maybe can think about what they would like to see in those places where I'm going to be. So I'm trying to connect those two ideas and um, through voice chat, through pictures, through talking to my students and listening to them and giving them feedback. And then like the thing that I want to do also is like every Sunday, I would like to do a uh, YouTube live from mm. wherever I am oh, know, wow. to connect with my students that way. So uh, I think that that will give my students the possibility, first of all, to travel with me. Um, and at the same time to to have another way of practicing and achieving fluency. So I'm really psyched and, and happy about my program because um, I think it's it's a great opportunity for people to practice in a more relaxed way, um, not talking, and generally I teach business English and this is a different um, opportunity for my students. You know, here it's the summertime and most people are mm. on vacation, so we are more relaxed and so that I think it's a great opportunity for people to practice English in a different way mm, yeah on a topic that well most people enjoy I think travel um maybe some people don't like traveling I don't know so, but um some people don't some people aren't into it but for those that are uh, into it they'll they'll have something to say for one I mean, I think that's the really important thing in English is, you know, talking about things that you're interested in with people who you're interested in. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I have a movie club so that we can, you know, talk about what we like with people right. that, that are that are similar. So, yeah, I really like the idea of bringing them together. And maybe by doing your YouTube lives, you'll discover that you have subscribers who live in the places you're visiting. Um, that would be <gasps> so cool. Yeah, that would be awesome, actually, you know, okay. to have those discoveries. And and also, I mean, it's also something, you know, that I'm not totally in control of. So it's it's going to be something that gets done along the way. Um, I have a plan. I have an idea of what I want to do. And uh, but at the same time, one of the wonderful things about traveling is that you have to embrace the unexpected 
Mm. Uh, which is what happens in communication too. So there are lots of connections between uh, meeting a person and speaking English and being somewhere and traveling and being able to embrace the unexpected. So um, there are so many points of connection in, in the two experiences that, um, you know, it's it's a no fail in, in that sense I guess yeah they fit they fit together really well I think that's also nice when you can transfer like if you have visited different places or even just different parts of your country like we mentioned Patagonia it's obviously very different to be in the very wild part of Argentina than it is to be in downtown Buenos Aires so if you can like survive you know in different places you know, I'm not even talking about the language element here because, you know, maybe you, like you say, you've lived in Barcelona. Obviously, you can speak Spanish in Barcelona, but it's not the same as Argentina. But I think you can draw a lot of um, strength and resilience from like surviving different situations when you're traveling. And I think, I think it's good to tap into that for something like learning English, which presents lots of challenges. But you can also say to yourself, you know, I've survived this. I managed this situation abroad and I, I coped and, you know, I can, I can cope with <laughs> learning English as, as well. Just well sometimes yeah, we, and that's, sometimes that, we forget, that, you know, how uh, clever and strong we are. We forget to draw on, you know, these other experiences. Totally. And, and I mean, and, and that's the thing. Um, it's such a boost of confidence when you realize that, everything that you have been doing or you've been practicing English for so long in your own country, maybe here in, in, in Argentina or, or South America in general. Mm -hmm. And and suddenly you go to places where perhaps even, it, I mean, because I'm going to be in Rome and uh, mm. of course there, the, the first language is not English, but I mean, um, when, when you actually can go to a place and realize that what connects you with another person, apart from many other things is, uh, that both that both people speak English and that that is what first connects them you know that language mm. that is alien to both people and and they can manage that and and that is such a boost of confidence and um, that is what actually um, excites me about about this process to make my students realize that they can do it because as you said you know it's like we are super powerful and sometimes we don't know that until we are faced with that situation mm. so uh that's what I would like to help my students experience okay through these discussions about about travel and and yeah English is so important um when traveling of course I mean even if sometimes it doesn't always work <laughs> most most people speak at least a few words and yeah it can be a way to get over a a, a language barrier so yeah that's nice okay it sounds really that's exciting right. yeah see I thought we were going to talk about like really practical language stuff like you know if you think about places you'd like to travel to you're going to use the conditional and we haven't talked about that at all we've talked more about the um you know the, the dream and the idea of connecting and all these things so I find that such so much more motivating than than thinking about um the very practical things although I'm sure it's going to also help with a lot of you know concrete practical things to do with English too um yeah yeah, yeah you're right I mean maybe I should say something about that but um the idea of course because this is a program that is prepared for both people who have already traveled and people who haven't been in those places so mm. um the idea of also using the language and perhaps what they have learned from the point of view of grammar to explain, to use like the, the simple past, or if they haven't been there to use conditionals to describe mm. aspirations or, or wishes or, you know. So from the point of view of, of the grammar or the structure of the language, there's also going to be a part that will kind of cover those um, aspects as well. So that's why yeah. I'm saying it's quite comprehensive and it's only like a month long, which will be um, how long I will be traveling. And um, also just to prepare for that, I'm offering a one week kind of free um, travel challenge so that people can understand how 
how the program works. And then mm -hmm. of course there's going to be like a post when we are coming back and, and <laughs> we are, you know, like leaving Europe <laughs> and reflecting on the experience. So it's like a full trip. A full, full yeah. trip, you know. I I love that. Yeah, you you let me see behind the scenes, and and yeah, the the one week version is about the 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 preparations, the getting ready, um, and then obviously they'll get to travel with you if they if they decide to continue. So that's um that's really really cool. I love that you're traveling at the same time that everyone else is thinking and talking about about travel. That makes it a really cool journey for everyone, even if they don't if they don't go anywhere. So. <laughs> Um, and even yeah, for because maybe they'll be on the beach, you know, while they are traveling yeah, who knows? virtually to Europe. <laughs> so, who, knows? <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Or if they're in Europe, well, it's not very um, warm and sunny at all at the moment. But you know, then that will give people a chance to dream of where they might go in a in a few months once the once the weather is better. Um, all right. So yeah, can so you can you tell us a bit more about um, the program, especially about the one week version and how people can join? Yes, sure. Uh, they can always go to my Instagram, which is chrisbontaroli.com. Then I, I'll send you yeah. the link. And and also I have a, kind of a, a form that they can sign up to. Mm. And then I'll contact them and send you the material. I'm, I've opened enrollment and the course it will be launched. This first pre-trial will be launched on the first day of the year because okay. everybody will be at home after you know it's like they have <laughs> eaten and celebrated and so on so we say like oh what can I do oh okay you know I'll start preparing my holidays or my virtual trip mm. so so yeah maybe you know so um that's when it's actually going to start but I'm receiving um people now if they want to talk about it and um uh, sign up I hope people sign up actually. Okay, <laughs> amazing. Well, I will put the, the link to your Instagram under this video and any other relevant links you want me to yeah. post um Great. so that people can can sign up. Yeah, I, I know that well I'm I really hate planning travel, so I'm not very organized, but I know that some people, yeah, like post Christmas is like a cue for them to start planning their summer holidays. Like I'm talking about people in the northern hemisphere. But I, right. yeah, my, I had a friend who her mum always used to do that. Like it's like after Christmas, right? Get out the holiday brochures if you remember those. I don't think those exist really anymore. But you would go to Probably the travel, travel agents and get your brochure and start like <laughs> flicking through and dreaming of where you're gonna where you're gonna travel to. So I think that was a bit of a ritual for her, and especially like at that time of year when the weather is really bad and the days are short, and you know you've still got several months before you can go on holiday it's really nice to start um thinking about it and planning so I, I think the timing is really good doing that in in January when you know we've had a break maybe for Christmas for those who celebrate and then you're kind of right. looking looking forward to the the next thing and better weather and longer days and everything like that so I think that right. The timing is uh is perfect. Yeah, that just made me made me think of that. Yeah, I want I want to know if like do you travel brochures still exist? Uh, yeah, I... yeah, I wonder. Because <laughs> maybe those travel. for like you know like res resorts and club med and this kind of yeah, places. But yeah. I don't know. You know, maybe for those places like. <laughs> all inclusive resorts in Cancun or something maybe yeah, yeah maybe something a bit a bit fancier yeah I mean like travel agencies still exist so they must have like some kind of brochure but I think that's why I don't like planning travel now because it means like going on like searching through Airbnb listings or you know you have to do it all yourself now um that's yeah that is so exhausting <laughs> that, that is certainly exhausting <laughs> It's like I I'm already all the reviews. And... Yeah, you have to go through all. The... Oh, it's like it's not my job. I'm not a travel agent. Like I don't. I, don't want to... I already have a job, and now I have to. Anyway, but we can't complain if we're lucky enough to be able to travel. You know, one of the things that we have to do nowadays is we can't flick through travel brochures. We have to, you know, go online, look at reviews, and That's you know, it can work out cheaper that way as well. So hey, not gonna com not gonna I complain. So. But you see, like what I'm <laughs> what I'm offering is like all that pre work that I have already done. So it's like mm. going to a travel agency <laughs> and becoming the tourist guide in a way. I think that's a really good analogy, oh, actually. Yeah for yeah. learning for learning English because the other day we were feeling sorry for ourselves because we were talking about AI and we were like 
you know, oh my God, the students can just like go and talk to an AI um nowadays like what's going to happen to our jobs are we going to be talking to an ai therapist in a few years because we don't have a job (laughs) and we have no money so all we can afford is to talk to ai and so like obviously you can get like upset about all that but then again like using ai still requires quite a lot of like you have to be very self-motivated and you really have to know what you're doing in order to use it well and you know um while we can use tools like yeah we can flick through airbnb listings and TripAdvisor, like it takes a lot of time sometimes we get it wrong and we end up booking something that's a a disaster so like travel agents still have their place and obviously teachers still have their place because I, i hear it from a lot of people they're trying to learn by themselves and they're using youtube videos and they're doing this and doing that but they don't really know what they're doing and they actually spend a lot of time doing things that maybe don't get them to their destination to come back to the travel theme so uh, you know I think it's really interesting to see how you know some jobs that we thought might disappear still exist because people still need help with these things they need totally. help planning a trip totally. they need help working yes. on their on their English and I think what you're doing you know being people's guide travel guide and English guide and bringing people together who want to talk about the same topic is is really important um, cause that's how people find the motivation to, to start and to, and to keep going. So, yeah. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> but uh, yes, I do agree though on, on the AI thing for sure. But, uh, you know, like several years ago at the very beginning of all this, I read a book that, that um, did talk about that. And, um, uh, and the author said that, um, what's not going to change is people's need for connection. So, mm. Perhaps you will find that a robot will be able to perform surgery, but there will you will always need a nurse to take care of the patient. And mm. I think that um, you know we are social beings, so we mm. need people. And maybe talking to a machine can go that far, but there's something about like the feeling that um, you can only get this way even if we are virtually now connecting you know it's like you can only get it with another human being so I think we should focus on that and that's why you know focusing on connection more than doing everything perfect is so important because we are human beings we are social beings and we need other people and, mm. and communication is like the number one way of reaching that and achieving that so yeah we'll exactly. be fine Kara will be fine (laughs) yeah we'll be okay we'll be okay yeah like um other primates like chimps in order to connect you know they like pick insects off of each other like that's their way of connecting because they don't (laughs) have language and like we have language and yeah you're right it's number one function is for social connection even though it has many practical uses like we invented it you know to, to achieve certain things but also to connect with each other otherwise we'd still we'd be picking insects off each other which I don't really think is you know I'm glad we evolved no, yeah, beyond, all that nice. yeah. beyond that but you know that just to, just to show you know that other primates have their ways of connecting and, and and ours is is language which you know thank goodness we invented otherwise yes you're right yes yeah. thank you whatever like, it was definitely. whoever whoever came up with that that was a great idea well done um we've done we've achieved so much since then but you you know if you think about it we oh, we, sure. we wouldn't be here talking on zoom if we hadn't invented language because we couldn't have That's got right. our thoughts out of our head to imagine things so <laughs> for sure but i mean th- this thing of like bringing it down you know and, and particularly like having that energy that idea and then kind of putting it out and connecting with another one i mean that is a process that um hopefully we are helping people uh, achieve so good for us yeah good for us yeah well well done as well yeah. okay yeah. um well thank you so much chris for this discussion this was really really cool i hope everyone watching has and en- enjoyed it i really enjoyed your energy and enthusiasm for this topic so i'm sure other people will be inspired by that too so um the links that we mentioned to join chris's program to join the one week version to try it out go on a get ready for traveling um the links to that will be under this video wherever wherever this is probably just on youtube but anyway 
go under the video, find those links, sign up, get in touch with Chris, follow Chris on Instagram, do all the things. Also, you're on YouTube, so people can also subscribe to your YouTube channel. Yeah, that's right. You know, I've just started it, but I mean, I have a few videos there and my idea, my goal is like to go on. So definitely. And Perfect. I'll be doing that live from Europe as well. So yeah. yeah, so it's a great time for people to subscribe then so that they can also get your updates from when you're traveling. I'm I'm looking forward to those. Those should be should be really, really, really cool. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Thanks okay. so much, Chris. Thanks everyone for watching. Thank you. Thank you so, so much for this. No problem. All right. Bye, everyone. Okay. Bye.